Dudes and dudettes, how are you guys? Uh, this is Chazzy and welcome back to the Mixer, you know, the show on YouTube where I talk about a lot of things mixed up in a huge little playlist where I do different topics covering things like sports and traveling and food and uh, my personal life and all that stuff, animals and stuff. Speaking of animals, today I'm going to do a video about something that I consider to be really, really cool but also a little sad because, you know, it's a possibly extinct species of an animal that we may never see again you know and it is called the Chinese river dolphin you know actually you see I could have put more um, uh, research into this to create a whole script and things that are better but it's actually a good excuse to use my handy dandy tablet you know I'm using this in every single video now to give you guys information in real time this thing is actually called the Baiji okay or in Chinese the um, the Ping or the Bang Anyway, the scientific name is Lopitex vexillifer, you know, the uh, Lopitox meaning left behind and vexillifer mean flag bearer, so it's a possibly extinct species, so we don't even know. Now, here's the thing. This dolphin is considered to be the very first dolphin species ever to be driven to extinction by the human race because humans freaking suck. And because Baji means white fin in Chinese, it basically translates to white fin dolphin. It's also called the Yang Yangtze River Dolphin, the Yangtze Dolphin and the White Fin Dolphin. It's nicknamed the goddess of the Yangtze, which is a river, you know? And it was regarded as the goddess of protection by local fishermen and boatmen. It is not to be confused with the Chinese Chinese white dolphin or the finless porpoise. I guess they look very similar. Okay, so before I sh before I get into the actual video itself and give you a little b uh, details, I'm going to show you guys a few photos of what this thing looked like. Okay, so a few little tidbits of info here for you guys regarding the, the uh, anatomy and uh, the morphology. Apparently, wow, uh, it's a lot of stuff here. So apparently uh, a mature male dolphin of this species was about uh, seven feet, seven inches long, you know, which would be about 2.3 meters. And the females were about eight feet and two inches long, you know, and apparently uh, 2.5 meters. And the longest specimen was eight feet, 10 inches long. And they weighed uh, around in general 280, sorry, 298 to 507 pounds, you know, with a lifespan of, wow, 24 years in the wild. That's actually really impressive, you know, and now it's pale with this and that. So apparently they have long and slightly up, uh, they have a long and a slightly upturned beak with 36 to uh, 31 to 36 conical teeth on either jaw. Very, very, very uh, frightening. And the dorsal fin is low and triangular. And so it resembles a light colored flag when a dolphin swims just below the surface of the murky river. Hence the name white flag dolphin and it has smaller eyes compared to a giant dolphin. Okay, so let's talk about speed, huh? This thing was pretty fast because it can actually reach uh, speeds of 60 kilometers per hour, you know, or 37 miles per hour usually stays within uh, 19 to 25 miles per hour, you know, and because of its poor vision, it had to rely mostly on sonar for navigation and also plays an important role in socializing, predator avoidance, group coordination, expressing emotions. They expressed emotions and you bastards drove them to extinction. Sound emission is focused and highly directed by the shape of the skull and the melon. Peak frequencies of echolocation clicks between 70 and 100 khz. I'm guessing that has to do with something with hertz, you know? But anyway, guys, as it is with uh, any extinct animal species, oh boy, before I continue, let me take a breather. Oy. Now, as is the case with any extinct animals that was drove into extinction by humans and I can imagine that because it was in China and the Chinese are known for eating pretty much anything that moves, that actually explains how we got the COVID-19, but more on that later. I do believe that they were hunted for food, you know, uh, they probably used, used their fins to make their famous fin soup, you know, and they probably used their blubber. Do dolphins have blubber? I don't think, I think that's just whales. The point is, I'm sure that a dolphin like this, is such a rare and magnificent species, could have sadly been used for different means of preparing different items, you know, and uh, aside from just the culinary arts, and I can imagine that the Chinese, being the way that they are, literally just, they over hunted these animals, you know, they, they probably hunted them in bulk you know they saw a dolphin and they killed it you know and how an animal can survive in such murky dirty waters in china is beyond me but that i mean 
it, it's unhealthy for us, but I guess that they can. It's very weird though, because these things are actually a little scary if you think about it, you know? I mean, because, I, okay, it's a dolphin, but like, it looks intimidating, doesn't it? You know, it just looks a little, ah. But anyway, let's get back into the topic here. I have a few uh, other tidbits of info here that I think is really cool. Uh, efforts were made to conserve the species, you know, some time ago. But uh, in 2006, an expedition failed to find any of them in the river. So they really, really seek them as, as much as they could, but they couldn't find any more. So I guess um, it seems like, let's see here. It seems like, oh, uh, in 2007, a Chinese man apparently videotaped a large white animal swimming in the same river, so it might have been a, a river dolphin. And it was identified as a baji, but the presence of only one or a few animals, particularly of advanced age, is unfortunately not enough to save a functionally extinct species from the full extinction cycle. And the last known living uh, Chinese river dolphin was called Hui Kui, you know, and it died in 2002. So, uh, Apparently, that's when the species officially went extinct, you know, and the World Wildlife Fund is calling for the preservation of any possible badger habitat in case the species is located and can be revived. Now, here's the thing, guys. Um, there's actually some more stuff here that I'm going to show with you guys. There actually is, I mean, there is no evidence to suggest that they still are act, that they are alive, but... Like for now, it seems like they are extinct, but it is possible to save an animal that's on the brink of extinction, right? But to do that, you're going to have to isolate human beings from this animal completely, hunters and poachers and ill-natured bastards who just kill for sport, you know? And you have to have obviously more than just one species so they can procreate. You know, I don't think two is enough, but if you can get two to procreate and then, you know, the female puts out her, her little baby dolphins, it might be possible to save the species, but it's much easier even if you have a hundred of a species that's already considered to be the brink of extinction considering that we have a huge planet you know where so many different species can thrive at a given time you know unless you think the earth is flat i talked about that on another video but basically it is possible to save an animal that's on the brink of extinction but as far as we know this animal is already extinct you know there's no evidence to suggest that there still could be any more of them out there and uh they tried to find more they went on expeditions to search for them but apparently it's just not gonna happen, you know? And apparently they uh, they they sort of existed more about uh, 1,700 kilometers or 1,100 miles off the middle and all reaches of the river from the west of the mouth of the river near to Shanghai, you know, and uh, also in some other lakes. So they seem to be, uh it seems like approximately, they were concentrated in that one area and approximately 12% of the world's human population lives and works within the same river that these dolphins were in there in the catchment area. So it put a lot of pressure on the river. So I guess it, it makes sense as to why uh, so many of them were hunted in such a short amount of time. The conservation efforts were actually very rudimentary. They tried, but they failed because in the 1950s, there, there was estimated to be about 6,000 of these dolphins in the river and it declined rapidly over the next 50 years. Only a few hundred were left by 1970 and then it dropped down to 400 by the 80s and then 13 in 1997. Holy crap. There were 13 river dolphins left in 1997 when they searched the river, man. That's crazy. And it's now the most endangered cetacean in the world, you know? And yeah, apparently it was last sighted. Uh, there was the possible sighting in 2007, you know? And it's endangered. It, it is an endangered species, but it is now thought to be extinct, you know? And here we go. We have a few photos here, you know, a lot of fishing, you know, and scientists were going, uh, they tried to uh, kill these things, you know, for food. And uh, this is a very heavy photo. This is a very hard photo to swallow, but I'm gonna show you guys anyway, you know, try to maybe raise a little awareness. Here is a photo that is a little hard to stomach of a hunter who killed a Chinese river dolphin, this bastard, you know, uh, a fisher, I would say, you know, he probably killed it for food, but it's still a very hard photo to swallow, you know, because imagine killing these things en masse, you know, killing so many of them one after the other. And noise pollution caused a blind animal to collide with propellers, you know, so, and um, the riverbed was dredged, you know, there was a lot of waste that came into the river and polluted it, so there was a lot of electrofishing, you know, so as I can imagine, they were hunted for a lot of this reason, and it is very sad, guys, of course, it's very sad, you know, it's, uh, it's something that, 
I mean, China is a very dirty country, isn't it? It's not exactly the cleanest place in the world, you know? And the way that they're not exactly a hygienic people. Of course, I can't generalize because if you go to places like Hong Kong and Shanghai, you know, like uh, towards the capital where you have big capital cities, you know, then yes, it's gonna be a lot cleaner. But in general, I think the vast majority of the country is very, very polluted and dirty. So it, I can imagine that it's hard for a, a, a species like this to survive in a river, you know, especially when that's murky and they already don't see too well. They don't have a lot of good eyesight. So it obviously was very difficult for them to adapt. I can imagine that completely. However, however, I still can't really wrap my head around people just because like, let's be honest here. If you're a fisher and like, and you consider yourself to be a poacher, you're going to attack the animals just for sport, you know? Sometimes you don't even need anything out of the animal, but you just kill it because it's there, you know? That's why I hate poachers, you know, and certain kinds of fishermen. If you fish just regular fish like tuna, you know, lobsters, crabs, whatever, you know, that that's your, it's what you gotta do. But if you like actively kill dolphins and sharks, you know, it's just, and uh, there is one little thing I want to talk about, the folklore. Apparently, this is a really interesting story. Per Chinese folklore, a beautiful young girl is said to have lived with her stepfather on the banks of the river Yangtze, and he was evil, he was a greedy man out for his own self-interest. And one day he took the girl on a boat intending to sell her on the market. Yikes, what a stepfather, huh? What a stepdaddy. But out on the river, he became infatuated with her beauty and tried to take advantage of her. The Chinese are weird, man. It's just some really weird stuff. And I'm joking, okay? It's just a, I'm sure that many stepfathers in other parts of the world are also weird, okay? It's just a joke here, you know, in this specific context, okay? It's not xenophobia, but okay. But the girl freed herself by plunging into the river, whereupon a big storm came and sank the boat. After the storm had settled, people saw a beautiful dolphin swimming, the incarnation of the girl, which became known as the goddess of the Yangtze. The Baji in the region of the Yangtze is regarded as a symbol of peace and prosperity. Or at least it was before you freaking douches drove it to extinction. But anyway, so very interesting folklore, very nice, you know. A little strange how a, a stepfather can become infatuated with his. Then again, it's not like it's not her own father, so I guess it's not. It's still creepy as hell, but not as if it was her own father, it'd be a lot worse. But anyway, so the thing is that this animal really should be preserved. You know, I, I don't know. I obviously can't say if it really is, st is still out there, if it is completely extinct. But the point is, guys, that it's, re it's very admirable when you see wildlife funds, you know, using to create uh, petitions that you can sign to try to help. I always try to sign these petitions to help animals wherever I can, you know. I'm not in a position to donate money to another country, you know, but whenever I can donate here where I live, I always try to. I always sign petitions helping, a, 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 like, a, I was gonna say PETA, but PETA kind of scares me, you know, because it, it has to do with people not consuming animals and they actually scare me a lot. But there are a few campaigns that they put out there that is for, for you to help a, a animals and conserve wildlife you know habitats so i'm all for that you know and if this animal is ever found i really hope that there is a way to bring it back from the brink of extinction like if it is completely extinct unfortunately then you obviously can't bring it back but if there are still a few species out there you know hopefully we can preserve them to some degree we can't take the dolphin out of the river in china and put it somewhere else because it's going to have difficulty adapting you know if you put a, a a river dolphin in a zoo you know it's not going to be the intention is good but let's be honest zoos are not the places for animals you know and uh varying opinions on that i don't like zoos i'm not a big fan i don't think animals should be kept in captivity even if some of them do live longer but still you know, you're just trying to preserve, you're trying to lock it in a cage and harness its instinct, uh, its wild instincts, and that's not cool, man. But anyway, so I think that that's all I can say about that. You know, I'm all for trying to preserve these animals, and I hope you guys found this video interesting, you know, a little tip, a few tidbits of info here. I always like uh, researching these videos. I guess I was looking at my tablet a little too much. It's because I didn't have too much time to research it properly, you know, but I still hope that the video comes out good and you guys enjoy it, okay? And that's it, guys. That's it for today. Another episode of The Mixer after recording a very tough video talking about a different topic. I'm gonna leave it up here in case you guys wanna watch it. But just thinking about the video and the topic that it entails made me feel a little crestfallen here. But that's it for today, okay? I'm gonna try to record a few other cool videos here before I hit 400 because after that happens, I'm gonna take a little break, but more on that later. I hope you guys uh, found this interesting and you wanna research it for yourself. You know, get more information about the dolphin and it's all good. It's all good. But anyway, this is Chazzy signing out for now. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video. Save the dolphin. <laughs>